welcome to my channel please do subscribe to my channel so that you can stay updated about my latest video you get notified so i will stay updated and know when i drop a new video and most of my video i want to help you when it comes to manipulation aspects so all you just need to do is subscribe just click on the subscribe button and it's totally free you won't be charged a dime for it so subscribe to increase my follower account and also for you to stay updated about the latest video i drop hey hello and welcome once again to my youtube channel which reflects to me if this is your first time visiting don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and also turn on the notification icon and if you're already a subscriber welcome back in this video i'll be showing you how to transform studio backdrop totally by changing it and making it an outdoor backdrop uh not every time you just put studio backdrop you put canva backdrop you put props but sometimes you want to relocate your studio picture from indoor to outdoor shoot and i'll be showing you how i do mine and make it look very very realistic and something you know about manipulation and that's what i usually tell you guys there are two ways to make manipulation look very nice number one is the depth of field number two is the footer shadow if your footer shadow is not there your manipulation will not look real so i'll show you how i do retain my own shadow and at the same time how i get quality pictures so with no further ado let's jump into action so this picture was taken with canon 6d the three light setup and i will show you how i did manipulation uh, the picture was shot on raw so i've done some big, basic adjustment you all know this adjustment and if you don't watch my previous video and i'll show how i do those adjustments there so after i'm done with that next thing i need to do is to open my picture in photoshop and wait for it to load up this is what i want to achieve this is what i want to achieve so here's what my picture look like there's no wide enough space the first thing you need to do as i usually say as i usually see we touch a picture first and flatten back the image. I won't be doing that in this particular video. I'm jumping straight into manipulation. Once you're done with that, the first step when it comes to manipulation is for you to expand your picture to the way you want and to crop your picture also. First thing cropping. So I'll go to my crop tool. You can, you can see my crop is over here. If yours is not, you just click on your C on your keyboard. It's going to take you to the crop panel automatically. And as you can see, I'm using my 4x5. And once I'm using my 4x5 right now, there are some times it's going to cut off some area like the footer area right now. So you can just drag from the down. Don't worry about all this area or all the blemishes on the backdrop. I'm going to make amendment to that. So as you can see, let me just adjust it a little bit. I'll click on my OK. So they being said right now, the next thing I need to do is to separate my subject from the backdrop. So I already have all the selection in my previous manipulation. So let's just jump into that and let's make the manipulation very very fast so as you can see right now here is where we stopped and this particular place here's all stopped so the next thing we need to do is to write just forget about this layer this is just for multi layer this is the combination of all the layer i've done so far so let's forget about it the first thing you need to do is to duplicate your subject your background layer by clicking on ctrl j if you're using a macbook command j so let's name this our model right now a model layer so on this model layer right now we are going to select our model Let's subtract and move it from the backdrop. I already have my selection. Let me bring up my selection right now. I already have my selection. So you can use different tools. You want to know how I remove my subject perfectly there. Also, a video on my channel that will help you with that. So I just want to make this video as fast as possible. So here's my selection right now. I use my quick selection tool and also my polygonal lasso tool to complete the selection. So let me say I'm done with the selection right now. What I just need to do, I'll right click on it. Then, sorry, I'll make sure I'm one of the selection tool. Let me use my polygonal lasso tool. Or I click on it, I'll go to feather, I'll be feathering by 2 pixel. Then I'll click on my OK. Once I'm done with that, I'll just have to click my max. So I have to turn off my background layer right now. As you can see, I have my subject layer on an entire different layer. So I'm going to turn it back on right now. So I'll go back to my background layer again. Click on Ctrl J again, hold down my Ctrl key, then I'm going to click the max of my model. Click on the max. So you're going to bring back the selection for us. So let's name this new layer we created right now. Let's name it modify. Let's name it modify. Let's name it modify. So all we just need to do right now is just to go to select, modify, then expand. I'll be expanding by 8 pixels. I'll click on my OK. So we're going to add this selection, this area that we need to fill up with the background. So we're going to add it to the selection. What to do that right now, I'll be using my rectangle marker tool. I'll click my rectangle marker tool. So I'm going to add this area first. I'll add this area. I'm going to add this stand. I will add this area. The reason I was able to add to this selection is because I'm on addition. If I'm on this single selection, once I select a new area, the previous selection is going to get deleted automatically. You can try it out and see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to add this area. 
means so as you say we are means so as you say we are also you can see so once i'm done what i just need to do is just right click on it sorry i still have one more place let me add this area just have to right click on it i'll go to fill i'll go to fill under fill i'll make sure i'm clicking on content away now click on ok then i wait for it to load up so let's see what it's going to give to us it's going to fill those area up with the initial backdrop color let's see if it's going to give us something we want or it's going to give us something entirely different and boom just as expected it did the perfect selection for me and look at how if someone don't know when i extend this backdrop someone might think this is how wide my studio backdrop is without knowing i did an extension and that's the beauty of manipulation when someone can tell the difference where your where picture is being manipulated or it was taken that way and this is what i actually love when it comes to manipulation and with this right now you have actually confused your enemy. So control D to select right now. The next stage for it to actually blur the backdrop, blah blah blah, as we used to do in our other manipulation. But in this right now, I don't think there's a need for this right now. So let's just go and bring in a manipulation background. I'll call it a day. So I'll first go to my file manager. I'll go to my file manager. I'll pick the one which I actually want to make use of right now. Let's see, let's see which one I will be making use of right now. Scroll down. I'll be listing this file for sale very soon going to be available for sale on my store as soon as possible but i'll be giving the initial back the backdrop i use for this video i'll be giving for you guys to download for free and go and get them on my telegram group it should be available on my telegram group once the video is live so let's see which backdrop we should we be using right now which one do we use in the previous video i just want to make it similar like i'm use another backdrop but just to make it the same thing i dropped uh in the thumbnail of the video so this is the one i'm making use of just have to drag it onto my photoshop as you can see going to expand it i will expand it till i see if it's still i see if it is filling my document for me still it's filling my document for me you can like it around this way like it around this way let me reduce it a little bit so like it around this way so whatever way you want it i think around this way is okay and boom but this one right now i brought it in but my shadow is not reflecting on number two there's a straight line here it's showing that i sub i removed the subject from backdrop right now which is not what i want so for you to clean that this line up first just come to the subject layer you're not clicking on the mouse you're clicking on the model itself then go to layer under layer come down to color the meeting under meeting color the contaminate and boom it's going to remove all those straight lines for you click on ok so the next thing we're doing right now is under this right now the background we just brought in in the blend from normal bring it down to soft light and boom but the issue i'm having right now is my shadow is here my shadow is here but the bluish that is on the background before is not making the overlay i bring in very nice so now from this right now let's turn it back to a normal from soft light turn it back to normal and also i want to add a little bit of depth of field to this area so for me to do that right now the layer I just brought in right now, the background I just brought in, duplicate it on by clicking on Ctrl G, then go to filter, under filter, go to blur, go to filter, under filter, go to blur, then click on Gaussian blur. So under the Gaussian blur, use the radius you want to make it up. I think I should be using about 9 pixel is okay, 9.8 pixel is okay. Okay, let's use 10 pixel. As you can see, the depth of field is reflecting. But the issue I'm having right now is also affecting my words affecting uh the floor area also so i'm going to create a max on it the one i blowed out you know there are two i blowed out the upper one i'm going to create a empty new max on it then i pick my brush make sure the color is on black 100 percent opacity and i'm going to scroll over the area which i don't want the blood to get you can see right now and boom so i made the both together right now clicking on ctrl e i'm going to change the blend mode from normal now down to soft light and boom so it's still not giving me what I need right now. So click on the layer directly below the layer we just brought in. Then go to adjustment layer. Under your ear and saturation, click on ear and saturation, then desaturate the color. We are still not getting what we want. So go back to this our layer which we just brought in right now. Our overlay. Then duplicate it once more by clicking on Ctrl J. And boom. It's giving us what we want. But the footer area is too sharp, so our shadow is no longer showing. So create a max on it, then clean over the area that you know the shadow is on before, which is the footer area. So let's clean over this area. 
to bring back our footer shadow for us. You can see the shadow is, shadow is there, and it's not giving you what you want. Go back to the layer below the layer I just brought in, then click on adjustment layer, go to brightness and contrast. Under the brightness, bring it down, bring it down a little bit. So it's going to actually harmonize with the skin and everything. This is me see right now. My manipulation is looking very, very nice and pink. What I just need to do right now is to color with my picture, and I'll call it a day. So we just have to go to my uppermost layer, click on my adjustment layer. And click on color lookup. Now we're using the lot I love using the most. I can use my natural color. I use my natural fineness. Let me use my let's go with the natural fineness right now. So all this all this lot they are available for sale on my store. Let me go for perfect skin. You can see they are available for sale on my store. You just go and make purchase there. And it's going to help your picture editing skill. So under the opacity right now, just bring down the opacity till I see fit. And boom. So now let's check out our before and after. Let's group everything together. Ctrl G. Here is the before and here is the after. So someone that I don't know when we are doing this manipulation, I think this is where we actually took the picture from. And that's the beauty of manipulation. And with this right now, you should be able to do something similar to this in no time. So if this video helps more one way or the another, kindly share with your friends. Someone out there might be in need of this. So see you guys in my next tutorial. Just let's out. So in case you're interested in getting any of my picture editing file, from my overlays down to my color lookup, which is my lot file. So you just have to scroll down to your video so under the comment this is my description so it's not going to load the description for you you just have to click on show more click on it so it's going to show all the options once it does that just click on my store link so here's my store link once you click on it it's going to take you directly to my store so you can actually select any file you want from the color lookup this is a light skin lots this is a feather which I use in my recent video. This is 100 premium baby overlays. This is my fourth video course. This video course entails on how to download all the files I want. The site I use in downloading all my files free of charge, including my Photoshop panels also. This includes my PNG files. This includes all my packs, all my picture editing files, my premium overlay, my PNG, my flying fabrics, my color lookup, my presets. So once you buy this, you've already bought everything apart from this one so here is my flying fabrics here is my in case you want to give me any project for me to work on here is my color lookup here is my background overlay and here is my preset file so in case you're interested in buying anyone you can actually go for them the good news there is that you can actually buy your own currency any currency of your choice you can buy with any currency of your choice 